welcome back to my channel and it is that time of year where everything has to be covered in Christmas lights and glitter and what else uh, I'm actually a Jewish Asian so I'm not entirely sure hey everyone welcome back to my channel and happy holidays I'm so so excited it is maker secret maker it is maker secret Santa time of year which means that I have to first get festive Okay, so for Secret Santa this year, I drew a Stephanie. I can't outcompute the computer girl, so instead I'm gonna take a bunch of old wrecked PCBs that I got at an e-waste facility and see if I can turn them into something cool. My idea is to make a Stephanie an unbeatably cool new computer desk. There is a $70 materials cap on Secret Santa projects, so the cedar is architectural salvage I picked up for free on Facebook Marketplace a while back, and the PCBs I dumpster dived out of a local e-waste center. The cedar had been used as concrete former on a daughter player's Beverly Hills mansion, so we had to like super aggressively plane it down to fresh wood faces. And once that was done, I cut them all down to 48 inches, which from extensive Instagram stalking is what I thought a Stephanie's desk size was. But then I managed to wiggle it out of her in conversation and it's way bigger, but shh. Sorry, Stephanie. So I think we're deciding that asymmetrical here is the move. So our PCB area is this. And then we're just double checking that the bigger one indeed fits in my 13 inch planer by quite a bit. And then, I don't know, this one's gonna be rough. Do you think this will fit less than 13 inches? What do we think? I'm feeling optimistic. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, good, good. So we began the glue up and then got to enjoy the best part of having a door facing the neighborhood alley. <laughs> oh, my love, friend. Hello, oh. shop dog. Oh. Hi. Ransom. Oh. I love tailless dogs. Hi. <laughs> And once Ransom's parents had been found, it was time to finish the glue up, which is always the best time to realize that you don't actually have as many clamps as you think you had. But we made it work, and in any case, it's going to be encased in resin anyway, so it doesn't really matter. The next morning, I took the clamps off, redonned the elf suit, which I realize might be a little jarring if you're watching this in, I don't know, like July and started running the pieces through the planer. And with reclaimed wood, this is like the best part because it's the first time you really get to see what you're working with. So as you're doing the glue up, it's a little bit of a shot in the dark because you're not sure, you know, what the wood's gonna look like once, once it's planed down. The answer, however, is really, really amazing. I'm telling you, cedar will never let you down unless you let it down. Maybe it's a two-way thing. This is my friend Lindsay, by the way. She is not only Elf of the Year, but also has her own really incredible woodworking YouTube channel, which I will link down below. I swear I get all my shop inspo from her. Anyway, I took the pieces of wood down to the miter saw and cut them to our final length. So we've got this interesting dilemma where the mold is like bowed up and it came like that. Look how bowed it is. Dang. Oh, that's gonna need a lot of pressure. Yeah. <laughs> Our hope here is that by aggressively clamping wood that we know is flat into the mold, we can sort of bend the mold into being flat. Okay, so we're gonna be really bold with this first pour because I wanna get the whole thing poured today. And so I want the one hour cure time of high performance, but high performance will exotherm. So like we can't leave it in this bucket for more than like five minutes um, okay. or it'll cook. Oh, that's fun. Oh, that's fun. I opted for a combo of Mixol pigments and mica pigments. The Mixol are very opaque and it will give it that like true black base. And then the mica pigments because you know I can't resist glitter. Real talk though, a little pop of sparkle adds so much like texture and depth to any pore. Now at this point, I should probably admit to you that I didn't really do any good math when I decided how much epoxy to pour. I did this sort of like back of the napkin, but you skipped the napkin, so like back of your brain mental math and thought I would be fine because I was built different. And the answer is that I was not built different and this was a way thicker pour than I intended. There's a tiny bit of heat coming off of it. It's not the worst, but... High chance it could exit there. High chance. It's been an hour, we came back, and um, it definitely cooked. I was right to be nervous, um, but it's workable because we're gonna be putting circuit boards on top of it, and it's gonna have texture, it's gonna be covered in other stuff. 
I think we're good. But now I know um, to do the math a little more carefully next time. <laughs> because it exothermed, typically high performance epoxy does not blush, but there's a little bit of like an oily film that is the blush on it. So we're gonna sand it between layers. The layout we had decided on ahead of time no longer applied because now that it had this huge ripple in the middle, um, the taller circuit boards didn't fit and had to be moved out to the outsides. And so we sort of like rejiggered it and played with the heights. And I kid you not, this is an hour and a half of footage of us laying everything out and then gluing everything down. And with everything in its final place, it was finally time for us to break out Total Boats, sorry, Boatle Toe, sorry, Total Boats, newest product, Thick Set Fathom, which is their really thick pour resin. So you can do up to two inches on a gigantic table with this and it doesn't overheat. Ready? Yeah. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> the downside is that it can take three to 10 days to cure. And so you have to do a little bit of advanced planning, which is not my forte. However, I did have the foresight to pour this right before Thanksgiving and then go visit my parents for Thanksgiving. So I couldn't be tempted to come into the workshop and like poke at it every 10 hours. It's so satisfying. And then I heat gunned away the bubbles and walked away. And then after a lovely Thanksgiving of camping with my family in 22 degrees at a national park, I came home to demold my table. At first I tried to take the gentle Instagram, bang it with a nice rubber mallet approach. And when that didn't work, I dragged it out onto my garage floor and sort of gently stepped on it. I was still being a little cautious. And then when that didn't work, I took to jumping on it and spent the next 10 minutes jumping on it, slamming it on the ground, prying at it with random objects in my shop until I could finally get it to comply with my wishes. Oh, got it under. Do you hear that? We get closer. Ooh. Oh, ta-da! It looks like shit. It is not flat. That's like an inch of deflection. F. That adds like at least a day to this. My best guess on this is that when it exothermed, the heat from that reaction warmed up the mold and it didn't stay rigid. And so it's sort of like the epoxy had its way instead of the mold having its way, but the mold having its way is literally the mold's job. Anyway, whatever. I sanded the overflow from the fathom pour off the top of the table and then I tried to flatten out the bottom, but it just took so long with the orbital sander that I waited until the next morning and used a belt sander and went out and got 30 grit for it. So that's how I flattened out the bottom and then using a circular saw and the belt sander, I took that draft angle off of the sides and that's left over from the way that the mold was made. And you know, I'm not a circular saw. I've never been a circular saw, but I imagine if I was, my Christmas wish would be to not be used the way that I am using it. Forcing this ancient second or third hand saw with a blade that's probably been on it for just as long through nearly two inches of epoxy was um, a stretch in Christmas joy, for sure. <laughs> But we made it work and once things were nice and square and everything was sanded appropriately, I flipped it over and cleaned it up and got ready to pour another layer of epoxy on the bottom. And this is the part that added another day is that I just can't send a table out that's so ripply on the bottom. So I'm doing a clear epoxy pour, which will flatten that out. And because it's so thin, I am using high performance epoxy from Bottle Tote and that's just to take advantage of that same day cure time because this project needs to get shipped to Texas like immediately. And then I hit it with a heat gun, let it cure, and it was time to battle all that dang tape and its stupid sticky residue off. And once I'd finally won, I took a roundover bit in my router to it and just knocked off that really sharp edge and gave it a nice smooth finish. And then I resumed my battle with the dang sticky tape by trying to sand it off and then I tried to acetone it off and then eventually I just took a chisel to it. 
Having learned my lesson, I flipped it over to repeat the process, except this time I used that nice green masking tape. So this is prepped for another pour and workshop is at 70 degrees, um, which will hopefully make it a little smoother. The bottom I did in 60 degrees and so it was a little ripply. You've seen me pour resin a lot of times. This is the Bodle Toe channel after all, so. So true. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna use the same bucket I've been using this whole time. What's this dance called? The bottle toe dance. Can it be hilarious if this goes really wrong and I have to plane it all off of this table? You and I have different definitions of hilarious. Ooh. Whoa. How are you feeling? You look so stressful. I really hope that this feels nicely. Oh, thank God. I don't want to have to refinish the tabletop, so I'm gonna like masking tape over yeah. and then route and then just varnish like the sides. Sure, sure. All the people showing up, by the way, are my friends arriving to help with the Christmas tree rocket launch that I posted in my last video. In case you missed it, it was a ton of fun. With the top surface fully masked off and protected, I went over and hit it with the rounder a bit on my router again. And once it was fully routed, I then hit it with the sander just to clean things up before the epoxy. And once again, I'm using my super jack of all trades Total Boat 2 to 1 high performance epoxy for this. And in case it's not abundantly clear, Total Boat does sponsor my channel. Uh, Bodle Toad does not, but Total Boat does. <laughs> With that mixed up, I just painted it onto the sides, and the idea is to give the sides the same surface finish as the top and the bottom without having to do a huge overpour over the whole thing. With the epoxy still wet, I went in and super carefully peeled off the masking tape. And it's really important to do this while the epoxy is still wet so that it, A, has some chance of sort of self-leveling and smoothing out with the routed edge, and also so that you don't glue any of the tape in. And that's it, I am ready to mail out my 2021 Secret Santa gift. I think it's really daunting when you get someone you're really close to for Secret Santa, but it's also a fun excuse to put a little extra like heart and soul into a project, and I definitely did that for this. So, a Stephanie, I really hope you like it. There's obviously some imperfections that bother me, but I hope, Stephanie, that you use it and that a lot of really amazing projects get made on this desktop for your channel. This week has been absolutely insane because I've been concurrently working on this and the booster section for the Christmas tree rocket that I just launched, that was my last video, and uh, two four foot wide projects in my eight foot wide garage has been an insane Tetris game that I don't ever want to play again. <laughs> Let's ship this out and see how it goes. You'll have to head over to Stephanie's channel to see if it made it intact. 
uh, foreshadowing, and uh, see the desk in its final form. In the meantime, time for me to get my gift. Mail time! I'm super excited. And what's made extra fun is that, well, I've like blacked it off, but the return address doesn't have a name. So, despite having received my package, I still have no idea who my secret Santa is. Shall we? All right. This old Tony! I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna say I was sort of hoping to get this old Tony, but... Zyla! Merry YouTube Maker Secret Santa! Surprise! I'm Santa! I know you are too, so we've already got a ton in common. What are the odds? I'll be honest with you, I usually lie, but it's Christmas and all. I wasn't too familiar with you or what you did before the Secret Santa, though once I started binge watching your channel, I recognized the canoe build video immediately. Anyway, hello! If you haven't opened the package, spoilers. Should I open the package first then? Yeah, I think I opened the package first. I don't want the spoilers. Here's the package. I'm gonna cut the ribbon because I'm a bad person. I'm so jazzed. I'm so excited. This is gonna be like the best made object I've ever held in my life. Oh my god. Oh, so we got my, my signature on here. This old Tony. Yo, did he make me a knife? This old Tony made me a knife and my own knife holder. This is insane. I wanna cut some things. What can I cut? Two things I think you should know. First, I get that a knife is maybe a weird gift. I'm not sure what you'll do. How is it a weird gift? It's an amazing gift. I'm so excited. Second, and probably more important, I am not a knife guy, not a knife maker. In fact, and I know it's exceedingly difficult to tell just by looking at it, smiley face. This is the first knife I've ever made. Usually I play hobby machinist on TV. <laughs> Be safe and marry YouTube maker secret Santa. Old Tony. Dang. I own a knife made by this old Tony. I feel like every maker at some point in their life is given the knife. And usually, like, in traditional America, and I'm talking like stereotype, 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 it's sort of in boyhood. But I never had a boyhood, because I'm not a boy. And so no one in my family ever gave me a knife. <laughs> I don't know, this sounds really corny, but this is my knife. Like someone finally gave me a knife, and that's really cool. Thank you, Tony. Thank you to the left hand and to the right hand and to know other parts of you because I don't think they exist if they're not on camera. This video was made possible by NordVPN. They're offering my audience super special holiday deals for anyone who uses nordvpn.com slash Zyla. If you're traveling this holiday season, you may want to consider using the fastest VPN out there. It's super easy to use with your choice of either one click or auto connection. Plus, with over 5,200 servers in over 60 countries, you can access whatever content you need from literally anywhere. Now, I'm hiding in some Californian fog to stay incognito, but the easier solution would probably have been to use NordVPN. With NordVPN, I can pretend I'm accessing the internet from anywhere in the world, no fog required. I can even take advantage of their double VPN service, routing my traffic through two servers and doubling the encryption. And if my VPN connection accidentally drops, can't imagine why, NordVPN's automatic kill switch will block my device from accessing the internet. Go to nordvpn.com slash Zyla to get a two-year plan plus an additional month with a 73% discount. That's just $2.16 a month.